Hello, Redis community Tel Aviv. I was looking forward to meeting you. Uh, also to enjoying all the hummus and best falafel in the world. <laughs> but most of all, I'm looking forward to share some of my knowledge and some uh, of my learnings with you all. Stuff I find really interesting. Uh, I hope you find it really interesting too. So what happens when Redis runs out of memory? In this talk, we are going to deep dive into Redis internals uh, and try to understand the, si the situation. <laughs> this is my son. <laughs> the, to try to understand the situation uh, of uh, what exactly happens uh, in Redis when, it, uh, when it's uh, used as a cache, when it runs out of memory. So first, let's understand what is cache. Cache is a component that stores data so it can be accessed faster in the future. Ideal cache would always have the data we need and will always delete, evict the data that we are not going to request in the future. Ten years ago, exactly ten years ago, in March 2009, when Redis was first released, it didn't have any of these features. It didn't know what to delete, what to evict, what to you know, uh, keep there for, the, for future requests. But developers were still using Redis as a cache even then. What they did to maintain a relatively constant amount level of memory was they tried to match the velocity of data going in and out of the system. They used to set a TTL, a time to leave, expiration time of every key, and uh, hoping that of course, uh, expecting that it will expire properly in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the time they set. But obviously, that's a lot of work uh, being left to developers, which is something that the server should be handling uh, after all. So just a few months after the first release of Redis, Salvatore introduced the Max Memory Configuration Directive. Now, developers had the possibility to set a max, maximum amount of memory that they wanted to use. What happened with that when that memory was reached? Well, it was quite simple. Redis would sample three keys, and then it would evict the one with shortest time to leave. So it would only sample keys that did have a uh, time to leave set. If there weren't any keys like that, it would just return an error. And that was the first eviction policy implemented in Redis. It, did, it was the default behavior back then, but later it would become known as volatile TTL. But Salvatore has this question, so this is not maybe the optimal way. Why are we deleting objects if there is no need to? And why do we use, are we using more memory if we don't need to? Let's try and, uh, to look for something else, maybe a better or more optimal way to do this. LRU, cache eviction policy, least recently used. It is basically an assumption that if we use the key recently, we are very likely to use it again soon. If we haven't used the key in a long time, we are probably not going to use it soon or ever again. And with that, we have two questions. So how are we going to track time? How are we going to track when was the, that key last used? And how are we going to find those keys with longest idle time in our flat key space? So this is the Redis subject structure. Sorry, <laughs> this is the Redis subject structure. In it, you can see a field, the LRU field, with 24 bits assigned to it that we are using for keeping um, a track of when was the key last used. And you would say 24 bits is very little. We cannot track that much. What timestamp would take much more. But timestamps in Redis are different. The LRU clock in Redis doesn't start uh, in the normal epoch. It starts when the server was started. <laughs> Sorry, but it starts when the server was started. OK, I'm going to do the mom thing here. OK, there we go. We <laughs> no, it's done. <laughs> mom life. Um, so 
in order to save space, the LRU clock of Redis starts counting time when the server was started. That's how, in only 24 bits, we are able to uh, have a reasonable uh, idea of when was the key last used. It overflows only after 194 days. And in that time, if everything works well, that key should already be ex expired anyway. So that's our first problem solved. The next one is how are we going to um, find how are we going to um, find the key with the longest idle time in our flat key space? And Salvatore said, this is a quote, since LRU is, itsel is it's in itself an approximation, we are going to try, and we don't need to use um, the perfect solution and find the exactly one key with the longest idle time. So the idea he came up with was three random keys, sample three random keys, and evict the one with the long, uh, highest idle time. This was hard-coded in the beginning. Afterwards, it became what we now know as, as max memory samples direct, directive. That was the first LRU eviction policy. It came with two flavors, all keys, and volatile. So if you wanted to ev evict keys among the full keys, uh, key space, you would select all keys LRU. Volatile LRU, it would only evict keys uh, with a set time to leave. And then, you would use the LRU eviction policy if you had um, a normal a power law distribution. So you access 20% of the keys in 80% of the time. In those cases, the LRU eviction would make sense. But if you have a normal uh, uniform distribution of, uh, of accesses, then you don't really need to spend all that processing power for that. You can just evict randomly. So you can use the volatile random or all keys random eviction policies, which were added about the same time uh, the, that the work on LRU had been done. With all keys random, you would sample, you would just evict randomly any key from the full key space. With volatile random, you would evict keys that have a TTL set. And about that time, a little bit later, there was one more. Uh, eviction policy added, which was needed and requested by the developer community, no eviction. In that case, if Redis was for maybe not used as cache or for, for just it was used as a normal database, people didn't want their keys evicted. So uh, we got the no eviction, eviction policy <laughs> uh, where um, yeah, uh, just an error would be returned and um, mm, there wouldn't be any evictions happening. So this is our timeline. This is how all of this developed, more or less. And in March 2014, it was time to start thinking about the improving the LRU algorithm. Another quote from Salvatore. If you looked at this algorithm across its executions, you can see that we are trashing a lot of interesting data. If we are choosing one key among just three keys, the probability of us evicting a good key is quite high. So, can we improve that somehow? He came up with an idea to use a pool of best keys. So, instead of you, uh, getting three or X uh, random keys every time and evicting one between just those three or X keys, we would still be sampling keys but putting all, them, uh, all of them in a, in a pool. We would po be populating the pool with good candidates, and in the end, we would be always evicting from the pool itself. Now let's go into a little bit more of detail how exactly that happens. So we would start looping through all the databases, and from every database, we are going to get X keys, where X is specified in max memory samples. For every key, we are going to calculate its idle time. How are we going to do that? Idle time or the score. It's called idle, but it's actually a score, and I'll explain later why. Because it's used for LFI, for volatile TTL2. 
So, how are we uh, calculating the LRU time, the idle time? Simple, just get the current LRU clock and subtract from it the uh, LRU key timestamp, the one in those 24 bits we previously talked about. And then, that goes in the eviction pool. Eviction pool is a structure of 16 keys ordered from left to right with the uh, uh, lowest idle time to the highest idle time. So meaning that the, the keys towards the end are the best candidates to expire. So now for every key we get, we start comparing it from the first element and compare it towards the, the, uh, the right. When we find if it, uh, if it uh, has smaller idle time than any of this, it doesn't ever go in the pool. If it, uh, uh, if it gets in the pool, then we look at the other elements. If we have space to the right, we shift all the elements to the right. If we, if we don't, we shift all the elements to the left, and then the last element drops out of the pool. It's not going to be a candidate for eviction anymore. And then, for uh, when, uh, so that's populating the pool. We do that every time we need to free the memory for every database. So first we populate the pool, and then we go to do the eviction. Once we, we are sure that we have good candidates in the pool, we start from the right, going to the left, and when we find the element we want to evict, we take it out of the, of the pool, and then we go and evict that element. With this approach, we got a much better performance of the LRU algorithm. Here you can see how, uh, how it uh, uh, performed in Redis 2.8, where we were just sampling X random keys with five samples. And here, uh, after the pool was implemented with five samples, you can see that with 10 samples, we are getting very close to the theoretical LRU. So with this simple approach, we already improved our performance of the LRU algorithm uh, many times. And this is how uh, the timeline looked at that moment. Now, in the beginning, we didn't have actually cross-database uh, cross cross eviction. Every time we needed to evict the key, we would just look in, in one database. But then there was one issue reported that uh, it got a lot of debate, a lot of conversation, and then uh, what you saw now where we look through all the databases that was implemented in, um, in, the, in the algorithm. And that was about the same time when we also implemented the, volatile TT, the eviction pool for volatile TTL2, July 2016. And that's also when work uh, on uh, LFU started. LFU is least frequently used algorithm. I'm not going to talk uh, a lot about it because we have a session about it uh, in about 20 minutes. So you're going to learn uh, a lot more about it. Um, but I just wanted to say, yeah, that uh, it's a least frequently used. So it's a little bit of a different approach. Instead of looking at keys that have been uh, used least recently, we evict keys that have been used least frequently. And I'm going to leave more of that uh, in the next, uh, the after next session. For now, I would like to thank you all for your attention and see you next time. <laughs>